Hey y'all! Welcome to the Booth Western Art Museum's Facebook page. My name is Miss Lynette. I am the Education Outreach Coordinator at the museum and I am so excited that y'all are joining me again this week for another live art lesson. So I hope some of you are joining me after watching um, a short video by our Director of Education, Patty Dees. Uh, she create, uh, talked in her video about an artwork that we had in our ha we have in our collection um, from our Warhol in the West exhibition in the fall. And then she also talks about an incredible book called Andy's Cats um, by Andy Warhol's nephew. Um, so, uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Just getting settled in here. Um, so last week on our art lesson, um, we did a drawing of a saguaro cactus. Um, and this week we are doing a drawing based on an artist that we had in the, our exhibition in the fall called Warhol in the West, Andy Warhol. We loved and adored the exhibition so much. Um, Andy Warhol creates artwork with such beautiful, vibrant colors, which I'm hoping we will do in our art project today. So if you're sitting there thinking, I've heard of Andy Warhol, but I'm not exactly sure I know who that is, trust me, you do. <laughs> Andy Warhol, I would consider Andy Warhol one of the most famous artists um, in the 20th century. Um, he was so important to the creation of the pop art movement. Um, and he created this artwork, which I am certain you have seen before. <laughs> so he did, this is his probably most famous artwork, um, the Campbell Soup Cans. And then he also created this image of Marilyn Monroe. Um, and I think if you, you've probably seen one of these two paint, uh, paintings that Andy Warhol has done. Um, he has done so much work um, and I am just so excited to talk to him about him today. Um, now for our drawings today, um, the p pieces I just showed you, those are ones that Andy Warhol did a little bit later in his life when he was more established as a pop artist in the, you know, height of his career. And today I want to do something that he did when he was a lot younger, um, when his career was just beginning. Um, and that is a series that he did of his cats. Uh, so this is one that I have printed out. <laughs> so something you may not know about Andy Warhol, which is one of my favorite facts, um, uh, just random facts about Andy Warhol, is that he had over 25 cats. <laughs> and all of them, except for one of them, was named Sam. <laughs> so he had a blue cat named Hester and another cat named Sam, and they had uh, several litters of kittens, and uh, they all looked like Sam, so they just said, you know what, just to not get them confused, let's name them all Sam. <laughs> so uh, he did a series of his cats um, that are very colorful and... Um, they have great line work and are, are very clear to read and I'm very excited. I'm gonna draw this one specifically. Um, and just as words of encouragement in our drawings, you know, yours does not have to look exactly like mine is going to look. Um, you can draw yours however you want. Um, and also if you're worried about the su supplies and not having lots of art materials, if all you have is a pencil and a piece of paper, that's perfect. <laughs> you don't need any fancy, art materials. We're just using whatever we have around the house. Um, so I'm actually going to show you um, some more uh, of Andy Warhol's cats. Um, so I'm going to flip my camera around so you can see the table in front of me. So you're going to get a lovely view of my ceiling <laughs> for just a second. All right. Here we go. Perfect. Oh yeah. Look at that. I didn't even have to adjust it too much. So this is the cat that I wanted to draw, but like I said, this is a series, so there are multiple, um, there's, I think, 16 pictures total of Andy Warhol's cats, um, and there are some other ones that I wanted to show y'all that I liked a lot, um, <laughs> so this is another one that Andy Warhol did of his cat named Sam, um, a nice profile view, and then there's, oh yeah, this one is very cute because it's a little Sam inside a big Sam, <laughs> little baby. And then I also enjoyed this cat because it's like what, looking at the cat from above. Um, and you get like the body on the outside and the head on the inside, which is kind of a fun angle to draw. And then I just really like this one a lot because this is just a big blob. <laughs> so this is just an encouragement. If there's another way that you want to draw your cat, I'm walking through this one because I like the clear silhouette of the cat that it makes. Um, but if you want to draw a different version of one of Andy Warhol's cats, um, 
there's great pictures online that you can use as a reference and you can just look at your phone. So I've got just a normal piece of paper here um, and I'm going to pull out my little toolbox that I have. So I have a value scale and a color wheel just in case I want to use reference these later on in the video. Um, and I'm just going to pull out a pencil and here we go. Let me get a better, better picture. Just a, this is just a normal pencil and then a big eraser in case I make some mistakes. I've got a pencil sharpener and then everything else in here is just stuff that you can color with that I might do later. I've got Sharpies, markers, crayons, color pencils. So there's, I wanted to give myself a lot of options, but again, if you don't have all of these materials, you don't need it. Just skip it. Use what you got. So I am going to start walking y'all through how to draw the outline of this cat. So just the most important lines that you're going to need in your drawing. And um, let me make sure, yep, we're still doing, looks good. So um, something I wanted to ask y'all on the last time when I uh, drew my cactus, I asked y'all to help me think of things that I could include in my drawing. So if you can think of anything um, that I should include when I'm drawing my cat, please put, the, put, put them in the comments and I will look at them as I am drawing. So the first thing, so I want this cat to take up a lot of my paper. Um, I want it to be really big. So what I'm going to do is just by drawing the outline, so every all the lines on the outside, so that I can make sure that my cat fits on the paper. Because sometimes I draw things too big where I'll draw the head really big and then I don't have any room for the rest of the body. So I'm going to do my best. So I'm going to start... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to start with the head. So I'm going to start kind of with these ear shapes since they are the closest to the top of the paper. So I'm going to start with this one. And really, my ears, I'm just drawing them as some nice pointy diagonal lines. And I'm making them kind of curved. They're kind of like triangles, but they're just a little bit more rounded at the top. Um, and I'm looking at, at this one by Andy Warhol, and I'm noticing that this one is smaller than this one, which I'm trying to do in mine. And then I'm looking at this almost looks like two straight lines one that kind of goes out a little bit and then it curves back in like this and then on this side I'm noticing that this line next to the head is kind of rounded I'm already noticing that I drew the head really big but that's okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is draw these parts, the curvy lines of the body. So I'm noticing that this one is kind of like a, almost like a hill that pokes out. And then also you notice that the line for this side of the body continues and creates the leg right here. So I'm actually gonna start, I'm gonna start closer to the bottom and then I'm gonna curve out, go back in. Whenever I draw, I do lots of little lines so that later I can just pick the one I like best and erase the other thing. So now I'm going to come over here and we've got a big curve. I'm actually going to redraw this part, bring it in a little bit. There we go. So that when I do this part, the curvy line, and I'm actually going to go back down here. And start from the bottom just to make sure I leave enough room because this is a big curved line right here so I want to make sure whoop, <laughs> it would help if I use the eraser the right way alrighty this is looking pretty good <laughs> so the next thing I'm gonna do is I need to draw um, this part of the cat leg so it's just gonna be a nice curved almost straight line across the bottom of your paper and then um, you can kind of see that it creates a little bump here. And then there's another line like this. It's kind of curved. And then you could just create the foot. And I'm going to, let's see. Andy Warhol put a lot of little toe beans on this cat. But I'm just going to do a curved shape here. Just because, oh, <laughs> I almost fell on the floor. 
I'm just gonna do, oh my gosh, I'm, y'all, I'm throwing my art supplies all over the room. Okay. I've rescued my eraser. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with just making an outline, just getting the basic shape of the cat and making sure it all fits on your paper. And then we can go back in and start adding the nice details that make it look like a beautiful cat. Now, the one thing I did uh, not include was the tail. Now, on Andy Warhol's, um, he kind of curves the tail down, but I didn't leave myself a lot of room at the bottom of the paper. So I'm actually gonna make the, the tail come up and fill some of this space in my drawing. How do I want to do this? I think I want to do it kind of curved. Alright, yeah, I'm going to just do a big curve. And if y'all are watching me draw this and say, oh my gosh, this you're almost drawing a circle and I'm really bad at drawing a perfect circle, you can always look around your house and find something like a cup or if this was bigger, you could even use it and use that curved edge almost as like a guide to help you um, figure out where those nice lines should go. All right, so I'm gonna clean up my drawing here. But also if you want your lines to be really wonky, that is totally fine. I mean, Warhol's looks good, but it's even. I wouldn't say his is super perfect. He was an artist that loved to embrace the imperfections and his mistakes in his artwork. Yes, I like how this tail looks. So now I'm going to go in and I think I'm going to start on the face. Now, um, I think I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start with the eyes. Um, just because whenever you're drawing an animal, I feel like that's the thing you kind of, you look at first. So that's what I want to include. So Andy Warhol's eyes, um, they're kind of, whenever people draw eyes, they say, you know, oh, it's like an almond shape. Um, but really you can even think of it as like a teardrop shape. Or are you just drawing a frowny face here? And then a smiley face line here. There you go. When I, and I, I do this even whenever I draw eyes. I want them both to be absolutely the same and perfect. So they mirror each other. But it doesn't have to be like that. Nobody's eyes in real life look exactly the same. Alright, so now that I've got the um, outline of the eyes, I'm going to draw... The colored part of the cat's eye, which is just a circle. This eye's a little bit tall. I'm gonna erase a little bit of this right here. There we go. Okay. So, give me another curved line in there. And now, <laughs> he's looking, he's looking. I'm gonna draw, so with, a, if you're drawing a person's eyes, you know, we usually draw the pupil as a circle, but we, but, um, we should all be pretty familiar that cats have those, that cat eye, where it's very straight up and down, like this. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. And later we'll, uh, color these in, um, and you can make the eye any color that you want. But this is looking very nice, so now we're going to draw the nose. So I'm looking at Warhol's, and he kind of has a line right here for the bridge of the nose. And then um, his nose for his cat, kind of the down curved line here. And then whoop, you kind of round the edges, and then you're going to have this middle bit part of the nose. And you're going to kind of curve up to meet them. It's kind of a weird shape. Um, if you have another way that you really like to draw noses and mouths, please do that. <laughs> this is just a suggestion. I'm just looking at how Amy Warhol did his. Um, so now we're going to draw the mouth, which is actually you're going to start from part of the nose. Kind of create these two little curved lines. And then Warhol has a little line here for the mouth which to me kind of looks like a tongue. <laughs> so I'm going to give my cat a little stick in their tongue out. 
This is very cute. All right, so now what I'm going to do is draw, we've got the chin, the cat right here. And then I'm going to move on. There's other lines in the face, like the, there's almost little eyebrows here and whiskers um, and these little hairs in the ears. But I'm going to move on and draw some of the other lines um, just so I don't get too focused on the face. So now I'm going to draw, I see that there are some lines down here where the leg is, which I'm going to do. So you're going to kind of start where you drew the line for the leg here and go up. You're going to curve it around, there you go, and then you're going to take another line here, kind of curve it in to meet this. You're basically taking these lines that you already drew and extending them to make it look like, you know, it, it's got like a shape. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to draw the leg over here, which again we're doing that same thing where we're, this line we drew for the outline, we're going to extend it. And then we're going to draw the little, this rounded part of the leg right here. Perfect. All right, there we go. Excellent. So, yeah, this is good. So now we can start adding some of the other lines. Um, and I'm going to draw just a couple of them. If anyone has any suggestions of things that I should um, add to my cat, now is the time. Because I think after I draw some of these, I want to go over them in Sharpie so that the lines really pop and stand out. So I'm going to give cat some whiskers, give some, some of these lines down here. Ooh, yeah, there's some little dots in here too that are very nice. So whenever Andy Warhol... Um, drew his series of cats. Um, he used all different colors, all of the cats that I showed you. Um, they were mostly pink except for that one orange one, um, but there are other ones that I didn't include that were blue and red and purple um, and all different colors. So whenever you decide that, if you decide that you want to draw your cat, um, I would consider using some, uh, some colors you would normally see a cat. I've never seen a pink cat before. I think I already said that, but <laughs> just kind of think outside the box. Okay, so let's see here. All right, well, I think, let's see. You know what? I think I like my cat as it is. I'm not going to add anything else to it. But again, if you think of something fun that you want to add to your cat, like um, like a hat or <laughs> maybe a bandana or a cow or I already said hat. But if there's something else that you want to add to your cat and even draw the background, you can absolutely do that. So now what I'm going to do is take this Sharpie and I'm actually just going to go over all of the lines that I already drew because that's going to make um, the outlines look really bold and really pop off of the page. So while I'm doing this, I am just going to talk to you all a little bit about Andy Warhol. Um, he was born in uh, 1928 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he uh, grew up in the Great Depression and was uh, very poor. And also when he was growing up, he was very sickly and had to stay at home a lot um, and miss school and, um, you know, had to stay in bed to get well. And his mom would actually um, create art projects and art lessons for him to do while he was at home so that he could uh, get his fine motor skills. That just means, you know, that you learn to be precise um, with your drawing skills um, and to be creative, um, which I really love. And uh, he loved drawing and making art so much that he went to um, some classes at a local institute called the Carnegie Institute, which now is a huge amazing museum called the Carnegie Museum of Art which 
I always felt whenever we did art lessons with the Andy Warhol exhibit with students who came to visit the museum, I always told them, this is how Andy Warhol started doing his artwork. He went to his local museum and got inspiration from there to make his own work. So y'all are doing that today. So after he went to college for um, art, he moved to New York City and became a commercial illustrator, which just means that he created artwork um, for magazines um, and almost for advertising and marketing uh, purposes. So he did some high heel illustrations for Glamour Magazine, which is, those are very fun to look at. Um, and he also, that was probably around the time that he created this cat series. And then he really wanted to become known, he was known as a really famous uh, commercial illustrator, but he really wanted to become a famous artist. And the pop art movement was becoming popular during that time, and then he really took off with it, created his own style of it, and defined what pop art is. So. If you've never heard of pop art, that's totally fine. It's basically, um, it's based off of popular culture. So like pop popular is kind of the uh, relation I like to make. Um, and, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so, so basically pop art focuses on things that you see every day, things that are popular in culture and in the media. So. Um, when he did his um, Campbell's Soup illustration, um, that's a great example of something that everyone is familiar with, which is why I like pop art so much, because no matter if you're super rich or very poor, um, pop art uses um, things in their paintings that everybody has seen and everybody's familiar with. So Andy Warhol did some uh, paintings of like Coca-Cola, the Campbell's Soup, but also uh, famous celebrities that everyone sees on the internet. Well, then it would have been newspapers and magazines. <laughs> um, but photographs that were very iconic and popular and recreated those uh, through his art, which I, I've always loved that about his work, how it relates to everybody. Um, the other thing that's very iconic about Andy Warhol's art is his use of color. His colors are super bright and not what you would expect, which is another thing I love about it is because whenever you see a cat, you kind of have an idea of what color it's going to be. You know, it could be brown, orange, gray, white, black. Um, and then he takes what you would expect and turns it all around and uses something that's totally new. And so I think... Um, a lot of people uh, find his art surprising at the time because it was just so different from what other people were making. Alright, I'm almost done with these. Let's see. Uh, I just saw these awesome comments about adding like a bow or socks, eyebrows, a bowl of milk. <laughs> Those are all such good suggestions. I think if y'all make your own artwork, you should include it and then share it with me. Maybe next time I draw a cat. Another thing, actually, I almost forgot. Another very important thing is I'm going to need to name this cat. So if you have some good name ideas, I would love that. If you're drawing at home, you know, you could even make this your cat if you have a pet cat. I'm allergic to cats, unfortunately, so I don't have one. <laughs> I still think they're very cute, though. Okay, let's see. All right. So whenever Andy Warhol created, um, these are uh, watercolors, but then he would use this blotted line technique of uh, printmaking that would give the lines these nice uh, thicknesses and thinness. Um, and so when I, I was kind of, when I was going in with Sharpie, I wanted to um, kind of copy that look. Um, oh, I need to do some lines on the tail. 
so that's why I wanted to go in with Sharpie because I love the bold lines and Andy Warhol's artwork and I wanted to include that in my own piece. Alrighty. Let's do a couple more over here. <laughs> Once I get started on drawing all these little fun details like this, I get I get a little lost in it. It's very relaxing for me. And again, when I'm drawing all these lines, I'm just doing little up and down dots. I think I actually am going to go in and add some little eyebrow lines. Cute. My cat looks a little angry now. <laughs> but I like it. Okay, little dots in the nose. Okay, cool. All right. Excellent. So I am really quickly just going to add a little bit of color in with mine. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to finish this um, off camera and then I will post it so y'all can see what the finished product looks like and then y'all can share what your finished products look like. I'm trying to start, I want to just draw the eye color really quickly. Um, I think I want to do green. I don't know why I'm feeling the green right now. I want to pick something light that's going to really pop. And I'm just grabbing a color pencil. Right in here. And of course, if you're familiar with using a color wheel, you can always decide um, what colors you want to use just by looking at a color wheel. So I've started using green. Maybe I want to use some colors that are right next to green. Um, like yellow and blue or maybe I want to try to do some cool colors which actually I'll show y'all I have a finished one that um, I did as kind of an example to uh, test my skills so I have this other drawing that I did <laughs> of this cat so this one I used markers to color and I also stuck to using um, the cool colors so I used blue and purple and green because we those are um, colors we associate with nature um so that's what i wanted to try doing with this and um i colored this one with markers um and you can see that i did do a little bit of scribble scrabble in here <laughs> i wasn't super perfect with my coloring um but i kind of wanted to leave some of the white of the paper coming through and and i was just doing this for fun and for practice so um i wasn't worrying about it too much about what it was gonna look like um and I, you can see, so you can see, I named my cat Charles. <laughs> I don't remember why. I think that's what I was, that's what I was in the mood for that day. So, um, I'm going to finish this one later and I'm going to share it with y'all. But here's a finished product of what yours might look like. Again, Andy Warhol, he used so many different colors. Um, like this Marilyn Monroe uh, artwork that he did. Um, you know, he gave her pink skin and used these really bright, uh, saturated colors, which just means that they are super, super bright and not dulled out. Um, so you can use those bright colors in your own artwork. The most important thing, though, to remember whenever you finish your artwork, you gotta sign it. You gotta sign your artwork. It might be a little bit confusing on mine because I wrote the name of the cat and then I wrote my name down here because <laughs> artists like to uh hi they either write their signature at the bottom or they'll hide it in the artwork somewhere so it's kind of a little scavenger hunt to find out where it is um so that's up to you but you want to make sure you can sign it so people know who made uh your amazing work so there you go so I'm gonna flip my camera around really quick um so you're gonna get that beautiful uh shot of my ceiling again all right <laughs> Perfect. So thank y'all so much for joining me today on this video. Um, if you are curious about our Warhol in the West exhibition that we had in the fall, there is an incredible YouTube video on our YouTube channel about, um, it, it's a video of the walkthrough of the exhibition and the director and our curators give their own comments and it's really fun to look at. Um, I would go check that out. Y'all can also go to our website and we have other um, Warhol resources um, for families and for kids on there. There's also an art lesson that I designed um, that's based on another one of Andy Warhol's pieces that um, uses everyday materials, which I just love doing. <laughs> um, 
And please, you can share your artwork um, with us if you do the hashtag Booth Museum, um, either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We can see it, and um, I just love seeing what y'all have created um, based off of these videos. It's so fun to work together and to, um, yeah, just to work together and see things that we all created together. It's just so fun. Um, I'll be here again next week on April 14th, same time, same place, 1045, on the uh, Booth Western Art Museum's Facebook page. Um, and we'll be talking about some other fun stuff. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but if you like our Facebook page, you can get updates on, um, we'll give updates later in the week about what we'll be doing. So if you just stay, stick around, stay tuned, you'll be, you'll be in the know. Uh, well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me and the Booth Western Art Museum, um, in sharing America's story. And, uh, from my home to yours, stay creative and make wonderful art. I'll see you next week. Bye.